So when I used to do my TV show, <laughs> if a, as much as a truck drove by, we'd have to do the whole scene over again. I don't do that here. Guy with the blower, we don't wait for that guy. We don't pay him 20 bucks like we used to to turn the blower off for a minute. No, we just roll. We got blowers, we got trucks, and we have a beautiful coconut queen hybrid palm here. Uh, coconut queen, it has nothing to do with the coconut really. Other than the fact that this type of uh, tree, this genus of trees is in the, is a cocozoid, meaning the fruit uh, is structured just like a coconut but in miniature. And you can actually eat the inside. There's a little coconut meat in it. But I'm over here in San Rafael and uh, this is such a wonderful tree. You probably don't know about this tree. No one does. There are very few of them, but you can see what we're trying to do here, right? There's an ugly telephone pole right there. And if you stand right here, which is the entry to the home, you don't notice it so much because this tree is so thick and dense. It's really green. So this is actually a hybrid, a special man-made hybrid between uh, the regular queen palm, which is uh, Cyagoras um, romanzophianum, and it's uh, similar, well, not similar, it's related cousin, the uh, Cyagoras schizophila. Uh, and the schizophila has flat oriented leaflets, meaning, let's see if I can do this, flat, they're all flat. The queen palm has radiating leaflets. So you can see it kind of has a happy middle point of semi-radiated, but they're pretty flat. They're pretty planar, and that gives them a more Kentia-like appearance. A Kentia palm, they'd all be exactly on the same plane. Uh, so these are, these are a little bit more on the same plane, but not exactly, but it does give it a more tropical appearance. This tree also, the schizophila is a shorter tree. It's a denser tree than the queen palm. There goes that truck. Uh, and it, um, because of that, the queen, the, uh, when you hybridize it with the queen palm, it's really tall and open. You get a denser, you get more density coming from the parent of the schizophila. Um, and you also get a more dwarfing aspect from the schizophila because the queen palm gets really tall really quickly. So this tree will hold lots of density. And you can see here, it will be wonderful to have this canopies drop and get really dense and give the, this yard some privacy here. Um, the problem with this tree is the guy that made it, the only guy out there that made it, he made a whole bunch of trees, but he ain't making no more as of 10 years ago. So we're like kind of moving these plants through our nursery. We've probably got about 30 or 40 left, maybe 50 at the most. And, uh, and then when they're gone, they're gone. That's it. Until we convince someone to uh, propagate more for us, which is going to be a really difficult thing to do. So if you want this tree, you got to get on it and call us quick because we're running out. And I'm going to introduce you to somebody who had as much uh, foresight to think this is a really super cool tree. Uh, and this tree, one thing I forgot to mention about this tree is it makes this beautiful, because of the density of the tree, it makes this wonderful canopy. You know, you get in here under this beautiful canopy. Why is that important? This is a kind of frosty area. Uh, this is much, people want the Kentia palm. And this is a flower right here. Usually I take them out. Uh, to give the tree more energy to grow its foliage instead of flower. But the, uh, because it looks a little bit like a kentia, it's great for colder areas or people that want kentia palms and can't have them because it's too cold and too hot. This plant can handle it. But once you create a canopy in a cold, frosty area like this, you can grow anything underneath it. So now you can grow kentia palms underneath what? the canopy and it's evergreen it's gonna keep the frost out so i want to introduce you to the homeowner here this is carolyn i don't know your last name carolyn caroline bird of canopy design studios hi Wait, did you say canopy designs that's right that's canopy ironic design studios. because now you have a canopy area. i know we always try to get in a good tree canopy so um carolyn's this fantastic landscape designer i can attest for her abilities because uh, you always want to know like what the landscape designer is doing at their very own home yeah. because that's the coolest possible thing to do, right? Because mm -hmm. otherwise you would have done it uh -huh. if there was something different. So the coolest, what's the coolest possible palm to use? Right here. Right there. Coconut queen. The coconut queen. So tell us about your design. Let's, let, why did you select the coconut queen? Because I, I didn't meet you. I didn't sell it to you. You just happened to buy it from Kyle, our salesman mm -hmm. down there. And what did he, uh, how did he talk to you? Or did, did you talk him into it? You know, we really loved the look of the Kintia palms. It was really hard to gear me anywhere else. I almost wanted to just go for it, but I knew how bad of a decision that was going to be. 
Um, and so we kind of got over here. We were looking at the mule palm as well. That's a good one. But we loved this one. This was a beautiful tree. It provided everything we needed. It was cold hardy. It could take the winds. And we really need shade. This is a play space for a two-year-old and a, a seven-week-old. Um, and so they're going to grow up under these beautiful palm trees. And this nice astroturf that we don't water. <laughs> yeah. We'll get nice and shady and stay cool for them with these great trees. And we're going for more of a tropical look out here. So these are modern and just, they look so good. We're so excited about I, these trees. I don't mean to interrupt you, but can I show off the rest of your design? Please, I know it's not right finished ahead. yet. Yeah. Let's, let's get well, one. work in progress. Can, you know, let's give us a little tour. Tell us what's going on. It's incredible design here. I'll have an overview yeah. of the entry system. We have uh, a beautiful Eichler here in San Rafael. Yeah, I'm going to stand back and show off these wonderful and we steps. Are currently can... in construction, so there's no plants here. I always so, put in the trees first. So tell me about the floating steps. This is the eye detail right here. Yeah, these are floating concrete stairs, which are just gorgeous and look like they're just floating in space that kind of guide you up for a doorway. And you flew up some special ombres to put yeah. that together. It's hard to pour concrete. Don't do this unless you know what you're doing. Yeah, these guys <laughs> came all the way from San Diego to mm -hmm. do this. Uh, and then the, the woodwork is good. They did this beautiful oh, yeah. concrete wall. If you get up, you'll catch some really nice wood grain on there. Look at that wood grain. It's so pretty. And that's concrete. That's concrete, and you will never have to address that oh, again. Yeah. And then we had some other people build us this beautiful fence that we just stained. Keep and? And the steel. And we have some Corten steel. Look at that. that. As well. That's also forever right there. And that's going to rust and this planter is going to be filled in with soil and cacti and agave and rocks. It's going to all And how come old together. is the home? This home was built in, I think, 59, maybe 60, 62. And it's still just classically beautiful. Eichlers are pretty special back here. Right. Now you did the driveway at the same time, obviously. Yeah, did the driveway. Right? Got some Mexican cobblestones running in between. Now, that one of the biggest problems of landscape architecture is where you put the garbage cans. It's not a problem. <laughs> that's the problem with homeowners. No one ever thinks about it. Right. Developers never put in a trash storage space. They want you to put it in your garage, and your nah. garage smells. Our garage is a bar and dartboards. Yeah. This is our beautiful trash shed. Do you want to So trash if you cans? hire Caroline to do your garden, the very first thing she's going to ask you is like, you know what? Most important thing, you gotta figure out where this trash is gonna go, you right? Do. You, don't wanna right. Be, you don't wanna be looking at Let's that. Let's look at the trash bins here. Look how pretty this is. I wanna show off the roof. Yeah. Look at the metal corrugated roof. That was gonna be Classic. a green roof. But... Classic. Yeah. <laughs> green roofs are overrated, in my opinion. They're a lot of maintenance. They turn into weeds pretty quick. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, check this out. So it's. Woo, this is pretty nice. Yeah, we'll store our stuff. Look, this is good. <laughs> This might be the highest budget uh, <laughs> kind of trash enclosure I've ever seen. I mean, this wall here, this is as good as you could build a concrete wall. I build a lot of walls like this. I know what it takes to build a wall. Giant uh -huh. footing, foundation, everything else. The concrete was vibrated in really nicely. Uh, there's no air pockets put, anywhere. Put well, there's a few. Post into the concrete. Yeah, that is just spectacular. So you did a great job. Yeah, I can actually, you could probably rent this out on Airbnb. I can. This is where my husband sleeps when he gets in trouble. Oh, really? How often does that happen? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Depends on the week. Depends on the week, right. Um, all right, well, there you go. You've seen it here first. It all started with the Coconut Queen. How do we get a hold of you, Carolyn? you want to give out your, your information? Uh, yeah, or just are you too scared to? Canopy Design Studios. I'm on Instagram and the internet. So find me, uh, Canopy Design Studios with an S. All right. Com. And I, I, I see that you're uh, raising some children for slave labor. I am. That's great. That's that, that really now. helps. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, we forgot to talk about your plant. We got to talk about your Look at this great collection of plants succulents that um, Carolyn picked out for her own garden. So we'll do a little fly over this one. Everybody loves when I used to do a TV show. We used to call this plant porn. Yeah. And here we go. Look at all these echidarias. Right on. Look at that. Um, well, there you go. That's it. This is one of my favorite plants of all, Gasteria. Uh, it is so hardy and tough. Makes these orange flowers. And uh, you're going to have a great, 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 uh, great setup. Thanks for letting Thank us interview you. you. Thank you guys for coming. All right.